to all the dispossessed youth of Africa for perpetuation of communion with ancestral spirits through the fight for African freedom and in the firm faith that the dead, the living and the unborn will unite to build the destroyed shrines. Hello and welcome, beloveds, to another episode of Wake Up Africa. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How are you doing? How's everything going? I really do pray that you are well in all your ways and that you're moving into living life truly on your own terms. A special shout out to my Patreon family. We appreciate love you so much. We have actually shared a link to like over a dozen PDF files of very important books that you should have in your library. Remember, beloveds, this is the time when we should be gathering all the documents, all the, all the proof for our children and for future generations, all the books that have been written by our own about what this crazy dark ages has been all about. And, you know, because one day they won't be there and we're seeing a rewriting of history. You know, they're trying to bring us back to the zero point so that they can, re you know, create a whole new narrative. But lest we forget, we must make the linkages um, every generation to previous generations and previous, you know, ancestral kingdoms. But those are definitely stories for other days. Beloveds, this story cut deep. This story, oof, this story really, really, really cut deep in a massive slap in the face to Magufuli's memory. Barely seven months after his death, President Sululu Hassan has actually made what is being called a surprise move and hired former British Prime Minister as a top advisor to help restore the reputation, the international reputation of Tanzania and whew, to help with, you know, the New World Order agenda. Now, in case you don't know, you know, he, Tony Blair has been accused on many, many occasions of being, a, you know, a Mason, beloved, of being a Freemason. There were so many allegations that went out. And we know that nearly every prime, I think it's every prime minister of the divided kingdom and every president of the divided states is somehow their bloodline is connected to the queen. I mean, so this is a huge, 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 huge blow for Tanzania. Massive slap in the face. And I hate to say it because, you know, I was so over emotional when Magufuli was taken out that I wanted to believe so badly that this woman had the right agenda and would continue with the great legacy that, you know, Magufuli had put for himself. But, you know, the one mistake that many of our African presidents make is they always pick a compliant deputy who won't cause them much trouble, who will just be there, you know. Rarely do they pick someone who is as vibrant, as energetic as them. And this has been a big blow. And I'm sure, that, you know, there was actually, you know, before they even put her in place, they really wanted to put an army general in place and kind of like not give her the seat, you know. And I really wanted to believe that she just happened to go to the World Economic Forum and study there. But to see her in full puppet mode, I mean, she also has the zombie vibe, but there's a story, so let me not even get into that. But this is so painful. This is really painful, beloveds. And, you know, I've been getting a lot of emails from, um, you know, diasporans who had excitedly moved to Tanzania, both from within Africa and also um, from the wider diaspora, the divided states, et cetera, et cetera, who are now like leaving like there's no tomorrow. This is such, I don't know. And it makes me think that Magufuli's sacrifice was not just for Tanzania. But it was for the whole of Africa, for those who had eyes to see and for those who had ears to hear. He told us, he delivered such an important message to us, beloveds. But this is really painful. You know, and they say as she moves with top speed to right her predecessor's um, perceived ru ruinous reign. You know, Tanzanian President Samia Sululu Hassan has made a bold step to repair her country's international reputation. That's how 
the Deutsche Welles and the BBCs of this world are running this story, beloved. And Tony Blair, it's like he w he's like a freaking New World Order architect, beloved. He's been tasked with trying to get the New World Order agenda into Africa. And, you know, I was reading, like, he has had such a focus. It's like he was assigned Africa, like, you know, back in 2007. It's embarrassing, but like 149, you know, Sierra Leone Paramount chiefs gathered and declared him crowned as, you know, the, had this massive ceremony with women singing everywhere, and he was crowned as the chief. And, you know, this, uh, this was basically, you know, two months before the end of his premiership, uh, Blair was being awarded the highest traditional honor of sent for sending British troops into Sierra Leone. And then he started this NGO called, I don't know what it's called, something like Institute for Global Change. But beloveds, and first of all, I don't even believe that the Blairs of this world are really in control of the wider agenda. Like, I really don't believe that. I think there's like outer space, you know, some of them call them reptilians, some of them, you know, blood-sucking vampires who are actually calling the shots because they, were imp they are implementing the New World Order agenda. And with everything that's happening in Tanzania, it's just like they are, it's not even just about Tanzania, beloveds. And you know, I don't know if you, know, you noticed, I did share with my Patreon family that some Tanzanian author was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. It's kind of, not the Nobel Peace Prize, oh, sorry, the, the Nobel Prize for Literature or whatever. So it's like little tokens, you know what I mean? Oh, you guys are now going in the right direction. So we'll avoid, uh, you know, award one of your authors the second black African or something like that to ever get that award in the hundred or so years that it's been, you know, given out. And then this, and the minute I saw her talking at the, Uni the United Nations General Assembly, an event like Magufuli never even left the country. He understood what time it is. The minute I saw her, I didn't even want to hear what she had to say. But I knew she'd sold out. And, you know, uh, Tanzania is not taking this lying down, beloved. There's a lot happening behind the scenes and under the waters. She's already trying to take care of opposition leaders, but it's not going to work. It's so sad. She is totally a new world order puppet. Like, it's painful. Especially being a woman. What? That's the highest betrayal, man. This really hurt, beloveds. This one, this one cut deep. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But, you know, there is, I'd even wanted to share, I don't know if I have his name here, but, you know, the, the revolution is kind of afoot in Tanzania, beloveds. And there's this really famous pastor who's been really speaking out against how this current president, because, you know, she's been also imprisoning uh, opposition leaders, etc., etc. But there's this, I can't remember his name. I'll try and put it in the comments below. I'll look for his channel, um, although it's all in Swahili, but you can figure it out. He has been really speaking boldly against what he says is now a massive New World Order agenda against Tanzania. And as I was saying earlier, I didn't even finish this thought. It's not just about Tanzania. But Tanzania is being used as an example for any melanated nation across the globe. If you step out of line, this is what we're going to do. Not only will we mash you up, but we'll come for your people. Tony Blair, dude. Tony freaking Blair. You hired Tony Blair? What are you smoking? Anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you as emotional about this as I am? This one, this one cut deep, beloveds. This one cut deep. Until next time. Tukopamoja. Pamoja.